What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my co-main event prediction for UFC 289. We got Charles Oliveira going against Benil Dariush. Oh, I need all the wins. Yeah. Harder than all that is. You better move. You might get knocked out. Knocked out. You better move. You might get knocked out. Knocked out. You better move. You might get knocked out. And we are back breaking down the co-main event for UFC 289 in a fight that feels like the co-main event. I mean, I think this should be a, I would say, I think this should be a crime that the fight is not five rounds, but I don't think we're going to need the fourth and the fifth. So I guess it really doesn't matter, but I mean, this feels like this is my main event. This is the people's main event for UFC 289. Um, I like this fight much better than the Nunez Aldana fight. This is a fight with very, very high stakes. Um, winner should be able to go out there and get a title shot. You know, Darius has been looking for that title shot for a while now. Oliveira, of course, just lost the title, going to see if he can get it back. So this is a very high stakes, phenomenal matchup. Cannot wait to break it down, talk about it, watch it on Saturday. It should be a very good one. Uh, before we get into the pick and prediction, if you guys can please leave a like on the video, subscribe here to DFS by the numbers. Um, I will be putting out well, I already put out my full card breakdown and prediction video. Also did a main event breakdown video for the Aldana Nunez fight. And I'll be getting out some live stream content throughout the week as well, early on in the week. So make sure you do like, subscribe, turn on the post notifications. That does go a long, long way. But I say we get into this absolute banger of a matchup. We got Benil Dariush going against Charles Oliveira. Uh, we'll start with Benil Dariush here. Uh, so Dariush, he is 34 years old, 5'10", with a 72-inch reach, 22 4 and one in 5 and 0 in his last 5 fights, Charles Oliveira 33 years old, 5 foot 10 with a 74 inch reach, 33 and 9, and he has 4 and 1 in his last 5 fights. So we'll take a look at the odds here. We see that uh, Benil Dariush is the favorite. His money pouring in on on Dariush now. He opened up minus 125. He was sitting around to pick him for a while. And it looks like I just refreshed my screen and it looks like Benil went from like minus 115 to like minus 150. So money's pouring in on Benil Dariush these last couple couple hours. Um, Charles Oliveira opened up plus 105, currently sitting around plus 130. So yeah, money pouring in on Dariush. And yeah, I like Benil Dariush to win the fight. Um, but I mean, let's not completely count out Charles Oliveira, right? I mean, you know, you go on Twitter this week and you know all you see is just Benil Dariush, Dariush. I think a lot of people are counting out Charles Oliveira, which is not something that I, I think is the smartest thing to do. Like, you know, don't get me wrong, stylistically, I think it's a good matchup for Benil Dariush here. I think, you know, he's going to be able to di dictate where this fight takes place. Um, Charles Oliveira is not taking down Benil Dariush. Dariush has phenomenal takedown defense, phenomenal ability to scramble, Oliveira is not going out there and getting this guy down to the mat. It's hard to see even Oliveira taking his back standing, anything like that, you know, like Oliveira has done in the past. You know, Benio Dariush is a very high-level black belt in BJJ. Um, so Oliveira is not taking him down. For Oliveira to get this fight down to the mat, <laughs> to be honest, I think it's he's going to have to get knocked down, as weird as that sounds, or or pull guard. Because he's not going to go out there single leg or double leg Benio Dariush and get him down. It's not going to happen. Um, and that's not really Charles Oliveira's game either way. Um, but I could see a scenario where Oliveira does get dropped and, like I said, maybe pull guard. He pulled guard against Islam Mahachev. I don't think that's the, the best idea in the world at all, really, like at all against Benio Dariush. But it is something I could see Charles Oliveira potentially doing if he wants to get the fight down to the mat. But what we're going to see Charles Oliveira do is is pressure um, early and often. He's going to pressure. He's going to uh, force, you know, bring a fight out of Benil Dariush, and he's going to try to land a big shot, um, try to hurt him, and then try to get on top and try to sub him. Um, so, this, yeah, this is going to be a really good fight here. I think the better fighter, you know, the better fighter on the feet is going to be Benil Dariush. I think his striking's very good as well. Um, I think he has the takedown defense to keep this upright, absolutely. And I guess it all comes down to the chin, the durability, you know, really of both guys. Um, Charles Oliveira, his last couple fights, like he's getting dropped a ton. Um, he got dropped in the Dustin Poirier fight. He got dropped like three times, I think, in the Gaethje fight. Um, got dropped in the Chandler fight. I mean, this guy's getting, oh, he got dropped in the Islam fight. Like he keeps on getting knocked down. You know, I really have concerns about the chin of Charles Oliveira. And in three of those last four fights where he is getting dropped, he is able to, you know, recover, you know, come back and, and get the finish in his own right. But against Islam Mahacha, we saw that that wasn't the case. He got hurt. Um, Islam was not afraid to go to the mat with Charles Oliveira, whereas, you know, Justin Gaethje did not want to do that. 
Dustin Poirier did not want to do that. You know, Michael Chandler, um, you know, Islam was not afraid to, when he hurt Charles, you know, get on top and get the finish. And that's exactly what happened. He made it look, you know, pretty easy. Once he did drop, Charles Oliveira was able to sub him shortly after that. And that could be the same thing with Benil Dariush. Like if Benil Dariush hurts Charles Oliveira and drops him, I don't think he's going to just let him recover and let him get back up like these other guys have been doing. Um, Darius is a very high-level black belt. If he does drop Oliveira, I think he can go to the mat with him, um, get him out of there via you know TKO or, or a submission as well. So, yeah, I think stylistically it is a good matchup for Darius. He should be the, the minute winner in terms of the striking. I think he's the better striker. He's going to be able to dictate where this fight takes place. But Charles Oliveira is, is super dangerous, and that's kind of where my hesitation lies with this money line now. I mean, Benil Darius, you see it on the screen, minus 115. I mean, I just refreshed my screen, and he's like minus 140 to minus 150. So money is coming in on Darius like very recently. So um, at minus 115, and that's kind of another story. I think I would, would take the shot on Darius here. I think minus 150 is, is getting a little bit, you know, disrespectful towards Oliveira. You know, minus 130, Minus 140, I mean, it seems about right to me. Even minus 150, I think, is about right. But, you know, Oliveira is, is always going to be a live dog, really, against anybody he fights. And that's because he is very, you know, pound for pound, probably one of the most dangerous fighters in the UFC. He has a ton of power in the feet, very sneaky power on the feet. And we have seen Benil Dariush hurt, you know, rocked, dropped, knocked out multiple times in the UFC. Uh, someone got mad at me for uh, for saying that Benil is his durability is kind of questionable, like, it is. I mean, he's, he's been knocked out. Actually, in the last 10 years, Benil Darius has been knocked out more times than Charles Oliveira, which is really crazy to say, but it's true. Um, he's been knocked out three times in the last 10 years. I think Charles Oliveira has been knocked out twice, something like that. And uh, Benil Darius has been knocked down, I think, like four times in the UFC. And I think Charles Oliveira has been knocked down four times as well in the UFC also. So, um, yeah, Benir Dariush, we talk about Charles Oliveira and his potential durability issues, which are very valid. Um, I think Dariush has some potential durability issues as well. They have not really shown themselves as of late, but if you've been watching you know, UFC for a while, you've been watching Dariush for a while, you will remember that he has been knocked out and he has been knocked out quite a few times, you know, more than you'd really like to see, you know, he got, even got hurt in the, the Jakar close fight, was very close to getting knocked out in that Jakar close fight as well, so Charles Oliveira, if he wins this fight, I think it is going to be probably by knockout, I think he probably knocks out Benil Dariush, potential club and sub, and I don't want to say that it's not on the table, because it, it very much is, so um, Charles Oliveira is very dangerous, but um, I don't know, his chin looks like terrible as of late, Getting dropped left and right, it's just, I don't know if that's going to work in this specific matchup. Getting dropped, you know, trying to recover, and then coming back in the, the later rounds, later half of the round, and, and finishing the fight. I don't know if that's going to work here. You know, it worked against Chandler, worked against Gaethje, worked against Dustin Poirier even. I don't know if it's working here against Dariush, a high, high-level grappler. So, I'm going to pick Benil Dariush. Um... Minus 150 where it's at now, I don't like it. Um, I would hope that more money would come in on Oliveira throughout the week, but it doesn't look that way at all. Like, I don't see many people um, on Oliveira, so I don't think the line's going to get any better. But, yeah, minus 150 is not something I'm too interested in. Uh, what I do like, though, is um, the under 2.5. You know, Charles Oliveira in under 2.5s, I mean, they, they hit more often than not. This guy has, what, 42 fights? I think 38 of them have finished under two and a half rounds. Um, I think 30, 38 or 30, like it's a ton. It's a ton. Like this guy, he, his fights finish inside the distance. I don't see why it's any different here. So the under two and a half, minus 165, I think that's very generous. And then the fight doesn't go to decision at minus 200. Seeing a Charles Oliveira fight doesn't go at minus 200. Just looking at that number, it just feels weird to me. Like it, you know, you'll never really see that ever I mean it doesn't make I know it's a three-round fight but still seeing a minus 200 for the fight doesn't go next to Charles Oliveira um, just doesn't make a ton of sense like this guy I think has been to decision like three or four times in his entire career and he has like 40 some fights so I think this fight does finish inside the distance whether it is a Benil Dariush knockout or sub or same thing Oliveira could win by knockout or or subs club and sub so I think there's pass for both guys to finish that's probably how I'm going to attack it but the pick for me is going to be Benil Dariush thank you guys so much for watching like subscribe let me know who you guys have down in the comments um, enjoy the fight should be a solid card solid main card and best of luck for UFC 289. See you later.